Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We have some exciting news to share with you today. Something we've kind of been keeping to ourselves for about a week now, but we're ready to share it with you. But first, we want to remind you guys of some of the things that have happened on the homestead over the last couple weeks. Just about a week and a half ago, we brought a new cow. She's actually a heifer onto our homestead because ugh, we had to make the really hard decision to put our previous milk cow, Hope, down. She wasn't doing well. Uh, she had BLV end stages and was just failing to thrive. We had to put her down. But because cows, we feel, are the most important animals on our homestead, a milk cow, we were in search for a new cow or heifer to bring on the property. We brought home Rose. She's a gorgeous heifer from a nearby farm. She's a registered Jersey and she was bred to another registered Jersey and was soon to calf as soon as we brought her onto our homestead. We knew that she was going to calf within a couple weeks of us bringing her home. What we didn't realize is that she was actually calving within just a few days of bringing her home. We brought her home a week ago Monday and she had her calf that Saturday. So only about five days after we brought her here, she had a calf. And you guys, there is some extra exciting news. Not only did it all go well, she gave birth, none of the milk fever issues that we've had in the past or anything like that, but something extra special. Her calf is a heifer calf, a girl. And that is so special because our ultimate hope is to have two cows, two milk cows on the homestead. And that is so important to us so that we can always have a fresh supply of milk and dairy products for us and for the animals that will supplement with their milk. The other reason that this is such a big deal is because we basically got two registered Jersey heifers for the price of one. We've really enjoyed having Jersey cows here on the homestead. We've really enjoyed milking and having you know, all of the dairy products. And we'd like to be able to, at some point, you know, sell Jersey cows to other homesteaders or small farms that want to do that as well. By having these two now registered Jersey heifers, we'll be able to use artificial insemination down the road, just like we did on Hope, breed them to a registered Jersey bull, you can actually buy sexed Jersey semen, so we can almost be guaranteed more heifers, and then we'll be able to supply registered Jersey heifers to more people in the homesteading community. And we think that that'll be a really awesome part of our business plan going forward here on the homestead. So you guys would like to introduce you to Babe, our brand new heifer calf. So you've heard us talk a lot about Rose being a heifer. So a heifer is the term used for a female bovine or cattle that has never had a calf. Once she has a calf, then she's considered a cow. So Rose is now a cow. But another thing about a heifer is that she's also never been milked. And that can be quite a process. Those first times that a heifer or a new cow has been milked. It can involve a lot of kicking, a lot of uh, struggling, kicking over milking buckets, just really kind of tantrum behavior. And that is worked out within the first, you know, couple weeks or couple months where the new cow learns how to behave on a milking stand, 
what it's going to feel like and ultimately it turns into something that the cow wants, uh, the relief of a full udder. Rose has now been milked four times. Today will be her fifth time up on the milking stand and overall I couldn't have asked for an easier transition for a heifer cow. This is the first time I've ever worked with a new cow on the milking stand. I've broken a lot of goats into the milking procedure and I want to tell you that Rose has been a dream compared to some of the new goats that I've started milking. Today we're going to bring you along with the milking process. Please know that she is not perfect. There is still kicking that goes along, but she's come a long way in the first four milkings. We are gonna go get all of our milking supplies ready, and then we will bring you along for that milking procedure. Before we actually get started milking, I wanted to go over our milking setup with you guys. It's a pretty simple setup, uh, but I just wanna go over all the different parts, everything that goes into it before we actually bring Rose in. Because she is new at being milked, uh, we didn't want her up on the stand while we explain everything because we're trying to get her into a routine and we don't want to disrupt that routine today. So we are going to show milking, uh, but we're not going to explain everything as we go. We're going to do that first. So when we bring Rose in, uh, just like we did with Hope, she'll come up onto the milking stanchion. This is a milking stanchion that I built into this barn. It's up on a platform. It's got a nice rubber mat so we can clean it and it stays pretty comfortable for her feet. Uh, it doesn't get slippery or anything if it's wet outside. She'll come in, she's got a grain bucket over here that we'll put some grain in. She'll put her head through here and we'll just slide this shut and lock it into place so that she stays in one spot while we're milking. Um, she's already gotten really used to doing this just within the last few days, so uh, she doesn't fight that part of it at all. Let me show you the actual milking equipment that we use. First, I want to talk to you a little bit about the barn that we're in. Uh, this barn was originally a milking barn back in the 1950s and 60s. So um, this barn actually on the other side has enough milking stanchions like this built into it to milk about 16 cows. Our goal down the road is to actually kind of restore this barn or at least get it back to the point where we can use some of those milking stanchions on the other side and use it the way that it was originally intended. But it needs quite a bit of repair work before we can get that done. And actually the very first thing that this barn needs is all new electric. Uh, the electric that is in here, none of the wiring was inside of any kind of conduit or anything, which was pretty typical of the time that it was put in. Uh, but because of that and because of the fact that it's been empty for so long, uh, a lot of the wires have been chewed on by mice and rats and other things and actually some bare wires have been hitting against the side of the barn. So we've actually cut the power off to this barn completely. Now the reason that that's important is because you may be wondering how we're going to run our milker with no uh, electricity. We're doing it the same way we did in our other milking barn and that is off of our solar power generator. Now the generator that we use is made by a company called Energy. Uh, we use it actually for a lot of different things around the homestead whenever we need kind of portable power. Uh, it has lithium batteries in it so it doesn't run off gas or anything like that and it can be recharged either from the wall or it can be recharged by the solar panel. So it really comes in handy. We always have it handy and ready to go especially during this time of year where we're getting a lot of thunderstorms, tornadoes, other things. It's a good source of backup power. Anyway, for today, it's running our milking system and the lights in the barn. So there are two other parts to our milking system. The first is a vacuum pump. Uh, we use a 5.5 CFM vacuum pump that is an oilless pump. When we first started milking, we had a pump that used oil. Um, and we just found that it sprayed a lot of oil mist up into the air. And it got on some of the other milking equipment. It got uh, so that our cow was breathing it in, we were breathing it in, and it just didn't seem like a good setup to us. So we switched to an oilless pump, which we're really, really happy with. And then the oilless pump will actually run the milker itself. We are using a Surge milker, which is a milker that they no longer make, uh, but it was a very popular milker for probably 60 or 70 years. A lot of dairies used it uh, back in the day, but not so much anymore. It has worked well for us, although we are considering upgrading down the road uh, as we hopefully will be milking more cows. So let me just show you. On this milker, we only milk two quarters at a time. 
Um, for those of you who don't know, a cow basically has four compartments to its udder. Uh, each one is called a quarter. So we milk the back two quarters first and then the front two quarters after that. And we just do two at a time. Uh, it still works out well. You can do all four at a time, but it gets pretty cumbersome with this type of milker because there's so many of these hoses hanging all over the place. And especially on a new cow that isn't used to it, uh, it kind of gets in the way. So the vacuum pump will hook up to the surge milker. These will go up on the teats and they will basically suck on the teats just like a calf would and all of the milk will run through these lines, go straight into the bucket, and it never gets a chance to get contaminated by the environment. So it's a really nice system. It keeps everything nice and clean, uh, makes us feel good about the milk that we're getting, that it's not contaminated with anything, and it, it's just worked out really well for us. I can hear that Rose is getting anxious to get in here. Uh, she's just outside the door, which is a good sign because that means she's starting to get into the routine. She wonders why we're in here and she's not in here yet. So let's go get her, bring her in, and Sarah will start setting everything up to get milking. Okay, let's call her in, see if she comes in right away. We might need to give her a little bit to remember this is what she needs to do, but this is part of the routine that she's still learning to come on in when we give her a call. Come on, Rose. Come on. Come on, Rose. Rose. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And the first thing I need to do is I need to wash her udder and her teats. I'm not going to talk a whole lot except to her because I don't want to disturb this, uh, you know, process right now. She's still learning. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze out some of the milk, the, the first milk, because it has, it could have some bacteria in it. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Now it's time to get the milking lines ready, turn on the milker, and put them on her back teats. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good, Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I'm using this wire here to hold up these milking lines to make sure that all the suction um, is working well so that nothing's kinked and also to try to keep uh, these away from her feet if she were to kick it would help um, prevent her from being able to kick these lines off. Right now I'm really trying to make this a positive experience for her but also to train her that she's not in control of when this starts and stops that we are just kind of establishing her as not the top cow that I'm the top cow or Kevin's the top cow. Good girl. 
So I just switched them to the front because the back two quarters were emptied out. One thing I've noticed with her is that when her quarters are empty, that's when she's most likely to kick at the lines. So I'm just watching the milk. Ah, ah. No. I'm also trying to correct her when she does something that I don't want her to do. I'm just learning, guys. I'm, I'm not an expert at this either. Good girl. Good girl. Right now I'm holding these lines because rather than using a wire, because I just want to be able to control where the lines are if she were to kick. I can move them away real quick if I see her shifting her weight or about to kick and keep them away from her feet. That's the plan anyway, it doesn't always work. So, good girl, Rose, good girl. Good girl. Ah, no, no. Good girl. No. Ah, no. Good girl. Okay, we'll take that last one off and we'll be done. So overall, she did really well. Uh, we're still working on when she is tired of being up here and when she's pretty much milked out. She wants to make the decision of when to be done and um, we want that to be our decision. So we're still working on that. So we're gonna count that as done. I'm gonna make sure to put some teat dip on her and then I'm, I'm gonna be using um, a cream that I made. It's a homemade version of a product called Dynamint and it helps with swelling or edema and it can just help keep the udder in good health. A lot of people, if they think that their, their cow is on the verge of getting mastitis or starting to see some strange things in the um, milking filter, they'll start using the, the Dynamint product all over the udder because it has some really great healing essential oils in it. So today I'm going to be using a standard teat dip to um, kill any bacteria that are on the teats and to prevent any bacteria from getting up the orifices or the openings of each of the teats. And I'm gonna follow up with the Dynamint all over her udder for udder health and also to combat any swelling that she still has in her udder. Edema is really common uh, right after a cow calves and especially with heifers who've never had an engorged udder and the Dynamint really helps with that. So I'm gonna do both of those things today. Now there's a great recipe for homemade Dynamint, the recipe that I used, and I'm gonna to link to the website that I got that from. The website is Venison for Dinner, and uh, the lady who does that blog is fantastic. Her name is Kate, and she's very knowledgeable, so make sure you check that out if you're interested in making Dynamint. This first time I made it with a lotion or a cream, and next time I'm gonna make it as an ointment. So I'm gonna get finishing her so she can get off the stand. This is just regular teat dip. It also has an emollient in it, which helps condition and moisturize the teats. Okay, she's ready to be done. She's all fixed up. I'm there you go. There you go. You may have seen that we have a collar on Rose, and that really is just temporary for now. We're still getting used to each other, and uh, sometimes I just need to catch her real quick to have her come with me or something. Our intention is to not have a collar on her all the time, and when we release her out to the pasture, 
we'll make sure to take that off. But it's also a breakaway collar, so if she were to get stuck on something and pull on it, she'd be able to get out of there. Now that we're done milking, we're going to take the milk and all the equipment into the house, strain the milk, wash everything up, and uh, so we can enjoy some of our wonderful milk. And we can also see how much milk we got. So we ended up with one and three quarters gallons of milk out of this morning's milking. We're super happy with that. Now there are a couple things that are contributing to like a lower amount of milk. She should be, she will be producing a lot more than that in the future. You know, she's a first time mom and this is the first time she's ever gone through the lactation process. So I expect for the next few months for her uh, volume to increase steadily. But then also with subsequent calves and subsequent lactations, her milk supply will increase over the next couple of years. It really is a good feeling to have a milk cow back on the homestead to be able to start getting the fresh milk again for our own needs, for the needs of all the other animals. We get back in the routine of making our own homemade cheese, butter, everything else that we need dairy product wise. The weather's starting to warm up, so homemade ice cream is definitely something to look forward to this summer. You guys, we appreciate you coming along as we experience a bunch of these new things, bring them to you and share in our experiences. We really love it that you're here and enjoying our life as well. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you're notified of all of our videos. And remember that the best way to help us is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.